Hello, I'm doing a book review, and the book I want to review is Frankenstein. Now, this is a collection of different horror mangas written and illustrated by Junji Ito. Now, a manga, for those of you who don't know, is basically a Japanese comic book or graphic novel. Now, the collection itself, or at least the English translation of this, was published in 2018. However, all the stories in here were published years earlier. Now, the first story in here, which takes up the first half of the book, is Junji Ito's manga adaptation of the 1818 novel Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus by Mary Shelley which is probably one of the most famous horror stories ever written. Like, even people who have never read that original novel know the name Frankenstein, and they know the story of Frankenstein. And of course, there have been countless different movies made that were either based on or inspired by that book. Probably the most famous adaptation of the book is the 1931 film with Boris Karloff. Now, this manga was originally published between the years 1994 and 1998, and from what I've read up, apparently Junji Ito was actually commissioned to write this to tie in with the 1994 adaptation of Frankenstein, which was directed by Kenneth Branagh. Now, being that the story of Frankenstein has been adapted so many times over the years and has been reinterpreted so many times over the years, Ito could have very easily have done his own spin on this story. Like, he could have done his own version of Frankenstein. But this manga is actually pretty true to the source material. Like, you could tell that Ito actually read that original novel, and he really is trying to be true to not just the events of the original novel, but also the tone and the themes of the original novel. Now, the plot of Junji Ito's Frankenstein is, it's the same plot as Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It begins where the captain of this ship is heading into the Arctic, specifically looking for the North Pole, and they come across this man on the ice who is pretty much on the brink of death, and they take this man in and nurse him back to health. This man is a man named Victor Frankenstein, who is actually pursuing another man that the crew of this ship had already seen a few days before, and the captain of this ship and this man become friends, and eventually Frankenstein reveals to the captain of this ship his story, and then the rest of it is basically a story within the story. In the story, you find out that Frankenstein was a young medical student who became obsessed with the concept of life and death and what creates life, and he actually created a man-made creature by stitching together the remains of different dead bodies, and then he brought it to life. After bringing this creature to life, he sees it as an abomination, and he abandons his own creation. But then it jumps ahead to a few months later, and during that time, the creature has become extremely intelligent, but has also come to hate his own existence. And now the creature wants revenge on Frankenstein for creating him. Again, the same basic plotline as the original novel. Again, this manga is very true to the source material. Like, if you're a fan of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, I think you'll definitely appreciate this. And it also keeps a lot of the more heartbreaking aspects of the book, like the whole story of the monster becoming emotionally attached to this struggling family and actually trying to help this family and then having that family reject him when they finally see him. Obviously, Ito does condense a lot of that, because in the book it went into a lot of detail about this family, and again, Ito very much condenses all of that, but that's to be expected when you're doing an adaptation. And also, the whole subplot from the book of the maid Justine being wrongfully accused of a murder that the creature actually committed, that's also included in here, and is just as heartbreaking in here as it was in the original 
original novel. Another thing that Ito stays very true to from the original book is the whole theme of obsession, how Frankenstein's obsession really destroyed him and his entire family, and how the monster's obsession with getting revenge on his creator destroyed whatever innocence he could have had. Now, it does change a few things from the source material. For example, Ito sort of expands the role of Victor's father, and I've read the book twice, and I don't remember Victor's father really playing that much of a role in the original Mary Shelley novel. Also, the whole plot point from the Mary Shelley novel of Frankenstein creating a female counterpart for the creature, that's expanded upon in this, and is done quite differently than it was in the original novel. The thing is, though, the original novel Frankenstein is actually a deeply philosophical novel. It touches on a lot of these themes about man's place in the universe and what happens when man tries to emulate God and the ethics of science, and I think the manga definitely tries to touch on a lot of the more philosophical aspects of the book, but it doesn't do it to the same extent that the book did. But while this is a pretty straightforward adaptation of Mary Shelley's novel. The one thing about this that is definitely Edo is the artwork. Like, the creature in this story is freaking terrifying, and Edo does not shy away from the fact that the Frankenstein monster is basically a zombie. Now, the way the Frankenstein monster is drawn in this comic, it's basically like a cross between Boris Karloff's Frankenstein monster and Christopher Lee's Frankenstein monster from Hammer's The Curse of Frankenstein. At the same time, the design is almost its own thing entirely. But again, if you're a fan of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, I highly recommend Junji Ito's version of this story. I would even almost recommend it, even if you've never read the original novel. However, I will say, if you consider yourself a horror fan, then you're doing yourself a massive disservice by not reading Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Now, after Frankenstein, the next six stories in this collection feature a character named Ashikiri. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right or not. Now, I'm not going to go through each individual story featuring this character. I'm just going to give a general synopsis of the overall arc that you see throughout these six stories. But basically, these stories follow a high school student named Ashikiri who is having these weird supernatural experiences, and you're not sure how much of them are real and how much of them are just hallucinations. But eventually, in these stories, he finds out that his house is actually the gateway to a parallel Earth, and it turns out that there is an evil alternate universe version of himself who is killing people on this parallel Earth, and then taking them to Ashikiri's world to bury them in Ashikiri's backyard. Now, of the stories in here featuring this character, my two favorites are Pen Pal and Intruder. After the Ashikiri stories are over and done with, you get a story called The Hell of the Doll Funeral, and this is probably my second favorite story in the collection next to Frankenstein. The plot of this story is there's this phenomenon happening where 30% of the world's children are turning into dolls, and the story follows this married couple whose little girl is turning into a doll. It's an inherently silly premise, but but what makes it work is you feel so bad for this mother and father as they watch their little girl go through this transformation. And yes, the premise is completely out there, like, it's nothing that can happen in real life, but basically what the story's kind of playing at is, what if it did, and how horrible would that actually be? And the ending of this story is 
creepy as fuck. The next story in the collection is called Face Firmly in Place, and this is a very darkly comedic story about this woman who is going to get, like, these pictures taken of her teeth or something, and the doctor hooks her up to this, like, hooks her up to this, like, thing that keeps her head still, but the doctor steps out of the room for a second and then accidentally dies, and she gets stuck in this thing. Again, Again, it's a ridiculous story, but it's it's interesting. I liked this story a lot. The final two stories in the collection are Boss Nan Nan and Hide and Seek with Boss Nan Nan. And neither one of these, I would really say, are horror stories per se. They're really just comedic stories about Junji Ito and his dog. Both of these stories are a lot of fun and are actually really cute. Again, not really horror stories. The only thing that's kind of horrific about them is how the dog is drawn, and the whole joke of these stories is that the dog is supposed to be evil. But yeah, that was my review on Junji Ito's Frankenstein, and bye.